Our guest in this segment is City Councilman Corey Roman. Corey, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. How are you all doing? Not as well as you, Corey, because you're 22 and the rest of us aren't. Well, I'll tell you, I turned 23 in April. Hey, happy birthday. Yeah, I've been 23 it. three times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I was actually I was actually laughing um, when, um, you know, you gave Bill Shreff that little plug there. Um, you'll just have to make sure you deduct that out of the um, out of the books for a salary, you know. Royalties, baby. Royalties. Is there a CoreyRoman.com website? No, there is not. Um, but I can tell you in the future there may be. Well, I'm going to get it right now, and it'll cost you $3,840 to buy it from me, Corey. <laughs> this is Jonathan. Fair price. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, you better you better jump on there man. and pay the twelve bucks at GoDaddy. <laughs> GoDaddy.com. Yeah, I, say, I think I can I think I can swing the twelve, but the thirty eight that might hurt my hurt my soul a little bit. <laughs> Corey, are you are you ready to tell us what you're running for next yet? No, I am not. Um, and you know, I think that um, as we we continue to see um, candidates um, announcing earlier and earlier um, through these election cycles, I it does not make me even more eager to, to come out earlier. Um, it seems as though the election cycles are starting a lot sooner than they had even a couple cycles ago. So, um, no, at this moment, there's, there's nothing to share. Have you made up your mind that you will or won't run for something? Um, I can't, I, I won't say either way. I'm, I'm weighing a couple different options right now, honestly. Um, and another big thing that's on my plate that I'm really looking forward to um, is graduating. Um, obviously, I'm still a student at Shepherd, I'm focusing on my undergrad. Um, I'm about to be an upcoming senior. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking at grad school and seeing whether it's going to be, um, you know, law school or if it's going to be a master's degree in, in public administration or public policy or something of the sort. So I have a couple of things that I, I want to do personally, um, and I, I don't want to necessarily um, jump the gun on um, a political office and not be able to give the time to my um, studies that I believe they deserve. Have you made up your mind what political party your next move might be in? <laughs> no, that's another good question. I, and, I, and I'll stick to the, um, to the answer I always give folks. Um, you know, I never really got involved in this for um, a party. Um, it's really to see different projects and, and really see good, gover um, good government at the, at the local level. Um, so, no, it's it's I can tell you I'm, I'm a Democrat. I'm a proud Democrat. Um, but as we had said last time, you never you never know what the what the future entails. So I don't want to pigeon my pigeonhole myself either way. You know, very nice. Well, I wanted to ask you also about the hiring of the new police chief, Aaron Gibbons, replacing George Swartwood. And uh, we had Aaron in on uh, Monday, along with uh, Mayor Kevin Knowles, about his new post after 17 years on the force. Your thoughts on that hiring? Oh, I think it's awesome. Um, I mean, like you said, you know, he's a 17 year veteran. Um, when I was actually, I was elected in 2020. Um, that's when um, Chief Gibbons was appointed as the deputy chief. Um, so obviously I got, um, you know, to, to meet with him and, and talk with him and really get to know him as a person a lot more. Um, and as you know, you all had spoken to, um, before when he was on the program, um, his wife owned the uh, cheesecake shop in, in Martinsburg, and I am a um, my family and myself are are um, cheesecake lovers. Um, so you know, I've I've had that connection um, to him and his family for quite a number of, number of years now, and I feel very comfortable um, with him being the, the top dog. You know, for my 40th birthday, my next door neighbor Al bought me a Costco cheesecake. Mm. That is the day I found out that nobody else in my family liked cheesecake. So therefore. The job of finishing that cheesecake was solely and entirely my responsibility. It and, was the best burden of responsibility I ever covered. And those are 30-pound cheesecakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a lot of cheesecake. <laughs> That's the kind I of responsibility Rob. you can handle. I asked Rob, have they, have they tried cheesecake and they say they don't like it, or they just say that they, they just don't like it? They, they said they didn't like cheesecake, which I don't understand I, personally. Because I'll tell you, I used to say that as well. And, and it was I hadn't tried a cheesecake that I genuinely had enjoyed. Um, and then I had one that, that just changed my, my opinion as a whole. So I, I was just wondering, you know, if it was one of those things like, um, you know, I don't, I don't like Brussels sprouts or, you know, I don't like cabbage. Because I used to say those exact same sure. things, even about cheesecake. But once I tried, you know, the right one, it, it got me. That's so. why nobody makes a, a cabbage there, and Brussels sprouts cake. Yeah, is there a right cabbage? That's the question. 
or a right Brussels sprout compared to cheesecake? There isn't. Well, in bacon. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I like cabbage personally. I, I don't. I don't do the Brussels sprouts, but I'll tear up some cabbage. I've got a. I got a friend named Devin. She makes amazing uh, Brussels sprouts. I never liked them before, but now now I've become a fan. <laughs> do we have time for a quick cheesecake story? We always have time for cheesecake. Joy and I were dating. My wife and I were dating. It was very early in the relationship. We were out to dinner, and we decided we were going to split an order of cheesecake because yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of cheesecake. It's and cheesecake, dense. Right? It's a dense dessert. So they come and it's got this gorgeous graham cracker crust that comes up the back and all that. So two forks, she spun it around and cut off the back end of the cheesecake where all the graham cracker crust is, and that was her part. And you I stayed know. with her? You I know. married her? I, well, you know, I was in love, and, and it was, but I think that was a test. That would change my opinion on my. <laughs> yeah, you always cut down the, the center. You don't cut yeah. the back off. Was... That's not fair. Yeah, worried about yeah, that. Yeah, that's interesting. Does she still, does she let you have the back of the cheesecake now? Hey, I'm the man of our house. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> After 40 years. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bodwell has some questions for you in regards to the, the Lambert Pool, Parks and Rec, and that good stuff. Hey, Corey, yeah, yeah I. I don't know if you heard our first segment. We were talking. I sure did. Well, why? Uh, I know the city gives them a lot of money. They canceled summer basketball. Who knows why? He had no answer, really. It was just a decision they made. I know it's a lot of our kids, a lot of our lower-income kids in the city of Martinsburg depend on that. I mean, that's one of the big activities they have during the summer. And he, sure. he said at one point, you know, it's not, you know, it's not travel. It's we're just wreck. Well, wreck to these kids. And I've coached, you know, 30, 40 teams out there, sponsored countless teams. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the NBA championship for them. I yep. mean, it's, it is everything to these kids in the nice. leagues. And it's the inner city kids of Martinsburg that are really going to suffer by them not having basketball. As a city councilman, do you have mm -hmm. do you have an opinion on this? Oh yeah, of course. I have an, I have an opinion on everything. Uh, <laughs> All right, and, that's and, why you're on the show. I definitely um, I definitely tuned into the first segment you did, um, and I like the questions that you asked because um, these are the questions that need to be asked, right? Um, these are these are questions that I um, you know have had with um, you know our liaison um, to the board there. Um, and with different folks that are on the council, um, you know, I have, I have our budget pulled up here. Um, $570,000 um, is what we, you know, allocated this year. Now, obviously, half of that comes from, you know, the, the hotel tax. Um, but, but specifically, um, I know that you, you were talking about basketball, and I'll circle back to that. Um, but for Lambert Pool, um, 45000 was allocated specifically for that. Um, and, you know, when we were going through the budget process, obviously that was a bit before um, the budget process, you know, we, we finalized things usually about the end of March or so. Um, it was a little bit too early to, to obviously get out of the pool and, and come across the things that they've come across that have, have hindered um, the pool opening. But one thing that I had asked, you know, in our budget process was that if we give them this money, is Lambert Pool going to be open? Um, you know, and I was, I was assured that, you know, it would be open, but obviously that was before, um, you know, they, they started the opening process and found the different, um, problems that are out there. Um, but I'll tell you, I, I've personally lived two minutes from, um, Lambert and the rec center out there, um, like 0.2 miles, literally. Um, I grew up, you know, going to Lambert pool, um, going to the rec center. And like you said, um, for low income families. Um, it, it may not seem a lot for, you know, just um, normal middle-class folks. And, Jonathan, I know you have experience with AAU and, um, you know, different travel um, travel leagues and different things of that sort. Um, but like you said, it is the NBA Finals, and it is everything to a lot of these kids um, that, that, that truly are blessed in, in some senses to even be able to play a sport at all. Um, you know, I think that it's something that we're going to have to – have to seriously look at um, and analyze it and see how we can get a better product. I mean, that's, I was, I'm just as upset, you know, um, as you all are, and I'm sure as the general public and community is um, that we're, we're still having these problems after years and, and years of, you know, Lambert pool and the rec center um, having issues. So, I mean, the, the issues were there before I, I came on council, obviously I know that um, Lambert pool, um, and as you know, Mr. Williams described, there are a multitude of problems um, that lay below the surface there. 
Um, but we really need to, to sit back and look at this holistically um, and come up with some type of some type of um, decision, whether that's you know a a redo of the of the whole area out there or whatever. Because I'm getting sick of um, nickel and diming. You know, and, and we keep spending thousands and thousands of dollars each year, hundreds of thousands of dollars, may I say, um, to, to upkeep the pool. And it seems as though each year um, there, there's another problem that arises. Well, and, and Corey, there, there are problems under the surface, literally and yeah. figuratively. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know one of one of my one of my good friends was coaching this summer. I was going to sponsor and, and he uh, just one day he got a text. Hey, we're not having the summer basketball league. It's like, what? That is the one season that there's nothing really else going on for these kids. Spring, yeah. there's baseball. Kids are still in school. Summer, there's nothing going on for these kids. I mean, I remember, and and my, my kids, I mean, they did have some advantages, no question, but I remember how much my kids look forward to playing summer basketball because it was like, all right, we're sitting around, we're, we're hanging out, summer's getting boring, but i got practice tomorrow or I've got a game tomorrow. And it's I get the feeling that this mistake will not exist next summer. I think they should rectify it Hopefully now. It should be fixed sooner, like you said, yeah. Jonathan. I, I mean, I don't disagree. At all. I just, I, I just, it's, it's all about the kids, and it just seems like, it, and it's all about the kids that, like he was saying, oh, it's not AU, it's not this. There are a lot of kids whose families have the ability to, you know, take trips, do things, do a lot of things, but there are a lot of kids' families who don't. Corey, and those are the kids we need to take is, care of. Does the city council feel like you do in regards to what is going on right now? I can tell you that um, I can't speak, obviously, for all the other council members, um, but I've had conversations with, you know, a lot of different folks that are on the council um, and in City Hall. Um, and, yeah, we, we all feel the same way. I mean, you know, we want our kids. And, and I've, I read some comments, um, you know, through the Facebook. Um, we, need, we need something for these kids to be able to do, right? Um, we know that when, when kids and, and our youth are, are bored, um, they typically will find things to do. Um, and when there are things to do that are um, proactive or um, things that I consider, you know, safe or, or just generally approved, um, that's when, you know, the, the bad things start to happen. Um, so I think we all understand that. Um, and really from, from the sense of, of how Jonathan was saying, I, I personally did have the luck of, you know, playing travel sports growing up. Um, but I know that there's a lot of kids out there that can't, right? And um, we need to be able to give kids an opportunity, no matter what their their economic status is, and, and to ensure that you know um, they do have something that is um, good. I mean, you know, something like a program, uh, multiple programs that, like Jonathan said, the summer basketball league or, or many other things, you know, through sports that, that we can have these kids doing so that they aren't getting in, in trouble or starting to get involved in um, things that they don't need to be. We talk about this, <clears throat> excuse me, in the passive tense, the decision was made to discontinue the, the, the summer leagues. Uh, who put it, who made the decision? Where does well, that duck I, stop? So, so we, we fund the city of Martinsburg, right? So we, we fund um, the, the parks and rec. Um, you know, we have some obligations. Like I said before, we have to give them half of our hotel tax. Um, and then we do give them money typically each year for different capital improvements. Um, but they do have their own board. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know if that was, you know, a, a board decision. I believe that um, Executive Director Williams said it was a, a staff and the board's decision. Um, so I believe that that would probably be a good question for maybe the, the board president or whoever. Well, for, the for, board. first off, Corey, forget that because, I mean, get, getting a guest from the Parks and Rec board, I, I might as well try to find the witness protection program uh, mobster hiding. Uh, to, to, you know, forget it. That's just not going to happen on this show. Uh, well, I've, you, I've I, been I, through I, that I, ringer way too many times, and. You're not going to get anybody from there to come on during a controversial time to give an answer about anything. So what can you do as a city councilman? What can the city council do about finding out why your money's not going to what you're investing it in? We can talk to the people that are on the, the board, right? I mean, that's like I said before, I, I do talk to our liaison. I do talk to a couple different members, but I don't have a specific answer when it comes to the, the summer basketball program. But what, what I can tell you I can do is get an answer. Um, you know, I never, and you all know this, I've never shied away um, from answering um, questions, especially when, you know, the, the general public is, is in dire need of these questions being answered. Um, so I can tell you, I'll, I can have conversations and get back to you, 
Um, but Probably. there's nothing that I can I can report today to say specifically why that program was was discontinued, other than I don't agree with with the decision. That would be lovely because I know I I will tell you right now I can't get an answer. I've been and unsuccessful I, I, in all previous I'll attempts. Reiterate, I think that that's a, I think that's a shame. Yeah, I would agree. I 100% uh, agree. So, that said, any further questions on this matter for Mr. Roman? No, Corey. Thanks. I I appreciate it, man. And what uh, what do you what are you majoring in? What do you you've got one more year at Shepherd? What what is the this bachelor's degree in? So the the bachelor's degree um, is in political communication, um, and I I had started my undergrad career um, at Blue Ridge where I had a focus um, on education and social sciences. Um, I was able to get two different associate's degrees from Blue Ridge, and I transferred to Shepherd this past year. Um, and I really had to take a look at it and decide whether I was going to continue um, down the education path um, or if I was going to, going to try and um, go down the path that, that um, I've afforded myself, you know, by, by running for council and, and being involved with, with a lot of different political organizations. Um, so I, I decided to take that path for an undergrad. And like I said, I know I'm going back for my master's either way. Um, so I think that'll be more of my, my specialized area. Seems to me you could have quite a career on K Street as a lobbyist. Well, yeah, that's, that's one thing that we've definitely been looking, um, looking at. Um, and I, it's one thing I definitely appreciate Shepard um, for is that they bring in a lot of guest practitioners um, so I've been able to make a lot of connections and meet a lot of different folks um, from the D.C. area um, in regards to lobbying. But I'm really trying to see, um, you know, what I want to do long term. Um, one thing that I've, I've always been interested in, obviously, is public administration. Um, so, you know, whether that that be like a assistant city manager or city manager or a county administrator, um, something along those lines is kind of how I've always seen myself um, in a career role. Um, but obviously, running for office and politics um, that that creates a different um, different lane. So I'll just really have to have to sit back and evaluate after I've, I've completed everything. Corey, what city projects would you like to see completed before your term expires? So the the one that I'm really excited for is the city hall um, reconstruction and redesign. Um, if if you drive down Queen Street, I'm sure everyone has seen it. Um, you know, they've, they've started on the inside. They've already started to tear things down. They have framing up. Um, and and the, the whole front facade is getting a, a facelift, I'll call it. Um, and that will be the city hall that will carry the city of Martinsburg, in my opinion, for at least the next, I don't want to say, but probably 30 years or so, if not longer. Um, because within those plans, um, we have expanded – um, our floor space for all of our departments. We have um, room to grow, which I think is awesome to be able to do um, inside the same building, inside the same um, you know footprint there. So that's probably the most or the most the project that I'm most excited to see finished. And I believe that it, it should be done, or or hopefully will be done around this time next summer, uh, maybe a little later. Obviously, things pop up through con through the construction process, um, but that's the one where. Um, I'll really feel as though um, we're set up for the future. Because like I said, we have all that expanded capacity inside, and it's just going to be a whole different feel um, when you walk into City Hall there. Corey, what do you see uh, Martinsburg, say, five years from now looking like? Well, I can tell you Martinsburg looked different from even three years ago when I joined council. Um, so I believe that, you know, all of these different um, improvement projects that, that we've got going on, whether it's the, the Queen Street underpass, um, the train station, um, just the general streetscape projects that we're doing, um, I, I, I believe Martinsburg is going to look completely different infrastructure-wise. Um, and I, I think that that's going to be beneficial moving forward. And I think that that's going to be one of the biggest things because um, a lot of folks just if you're not from Martinsburg, you don't live in Martinsburg. A lot of folks still do drive, you know, through downtown Martinsburg, through the heart of Martinsburg. Um, so I believe given it that facelift and, and, you know, finishing up some of these infrastructure projects are going to be the, the, one of the first things that people say, wow, um, you know, they're, they're really trying their best to improve um, the look of Martinsburg, um, but then also, you know, looking towards the future for, for different projects, whether it be recreation, um, or, you know, anything of the sorts. 
Cor, thanks so much for your time this morning. As always, greatly appreciated. Of course, fellas. And like I said, let me let me try and get an answer on that park, park and rec situation. I um, share the same sentiment as you guys. Like I said, I'm a North End kid. I grew up out here. I grew up going to Lambert. I grew up going to the rec center. Um, and we need answers. It's not acceptable. Um, I do believe that everyone's working, you know, in their in their best capacity, but it's it's just not working right now. So we we definitely do need answers. Thanks, Cor. Thanks, Cor. Of course.